The way Coffee Zero One is trying to wake up the European market, so to speak, this here is a premium SUV from a Chinese manufacturer. Way actually is the premium SUV brand from the Great Wall Motor Corporation and they are trying to tackle the European market with this one because I say if we prevail here, then we can prevail anywhere. Very interesting. Will this work? From a Germanish Thomas perspective, we'll take a closer look at this one here, the Coffee Zero One. In the front, huge grille, chrome plating in the vertical style and an off-roadish contrasting bumper. The headlamps horizontally drawn with vertical daytime running light. Very interesting. And nice blue color here, some lighter and darker nuance depending on where you look at it. Even more interesting is where is this car positioned if we come towards the side profile. First of all, this is a plug-in hybrid model, 150 kilometers or 90 miles of range from a 40 kilowatt hour battery. Soon also taking a look on the hood because they say that plug-in hybrids are at the moment the way to go and not battery electric only. They want to, want to go with that with smaller vehicles, but later on they also want to be all electric. If we take a look at the side profile here, come over. First of all, we have huge wheels. 21 inch right there in a two-tone style so pretty massive look and this whole design really is appealing European or American taste and this is very interesting the Chinese manufacturer is appealing European or US taste whereas for example Mercedes the German manufacturer is trying to appeal Chinese market taste at the moment with the design yeah that's it. very interesting isn't it as for the length this one here, 4 meters 84 or 191 inches, so indeed between a BMW X3 and X5 or between Mercedes GLC and Mercedes GLE. So interesting positioning between the classic German competition. When we follow here the side profile, the door handles, they fold in and out depending if the car is open or closed. We have the chrome frame here around the windows, also with the roof railing and rather strong shoulder effect here. So. Not exactly upright SUV, not exactly SUV coupe, something in between, but definitely a very fluent design here already in the side profile. And the turning indicators here in the front, already in a cascading style. And the same also accounts for the rear. We can see modern tail lamp signature, also with this typical vertical style, big way lettering right here, and also rather honest design in the lower part. We have an off-roadish contrasting bumper and no fake exhaust tip whatsoever. This plug-in hybrid system, by the way, works in the combustion engine in the front, electric motor in the front, and also electric motor in the rear to give you then the electric all-way drive. And the acceleration figure, actually quite impressive. Five seconds, everything combined, the fastest one, or seven seconds with a pure electric, then maximum speed of 135 kilometers an hour. And this comes here from a two-liter four-cylinder engine. This is in the combustion engine, as I said, one electric motor in the front, one also in the rear and 40 kilowatt hour net battery so this will be in the plug-in hybrid market one with the highest pure electric range and there's a color alternative we also have one here in black the coffee zero one which is yeah still one of the most liked colors if you look at this very segment it's always like black gray silver white and so on i would prefer a thomas blue definitely but do you prefer the black one? Tell me in the comments. As for Chinese vehicles, people have been quite critical about the build quality, but we can see here the panel gaps, at least here for example, are actually very marginal. So this is a first sign. We'll keep on testing. For example, also the door closing sound, famous test here on Autogefühl. This sounds very solid. So nice door closing sound. Then towards the interior, you can see here soft touch in the top part. This is the ambient lighting flashing at the moment. This will of course be a through light then in the final model. Then there are also soft touch materials here, right there and also there. And this is all high grade leatherette. This is one of the highest grades of leatherette available. This is all animal free and no one would expect it. This could also be like a 10,000 euro or dollar super leather whatever option, but it's all animal free. So this is really respectable that they went for that. The whole car is animal free. Then also here, galvanized tops for the window lever right there. This reminds us a little bit um, of the build quality we see maybe like from Genesis, for example. Inside door pockets right there. Then we have this illuminated way entry badge. And a uh, steering wheel that looks a little bit like a like Lincoln, for example, reminds me a little bit of a Lincoln design. Interesting blue-white interior. This is a very interesting style. And here also soft-touch dashboard. You can see a you know rather simple 
and basic instrument. We'll soon also show you more details about that. At the moment, ignition is off. Capacitive buttons for the steering wheel, they do give you some kind of feedback, but it's one area. I don't like capacitive buttons that much. We've already seen it with Mercedes, but at least they give you a haptic feedback right here. What's really cool in the highlight of this vehicle are the seats. Again, this is also... Yeah, I mean... Look at that, this quilting here, and it's, it's like a microfiber material, but the quilted microfiber, hardly have seen that ever, and then leather red on the outside. This feels super premium, very interesting. Wow, I mean, styling-wise and also, you know, how, how premium it feels, this is really, really impressive. Yeah, indeed, I mean, like, the first impression is, wow, look at that. Let's take a seat, see about the comfort, and... It's really interesting that they actually take, um, you know, the sustainability topic probably even more seriously than some of the German manufacturers at the moment. They are also heading this direction. We can see that they are also at the IA Motor Show in Munich with their new concept vehicles. Um, but this one here is production ready. Then here, electric motors for the seats and they are indeed very comfortable. You have an upright seating position as well and with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1, still enough headroom left. This here also features a panoramic roof. Um, when we turn the ignition on, we can also open it later on. By the way, this car here, you can also see you know, some, some sensors right here. This works with fake face recognition. So then when my face is being recognized, it already sets everything like steering wheel, seating position to my position. Now you might ask yourself, especially since it's coming from a Chinese manufacturer, what about data security? So what they do is the face recognition data, they say, is just stored inside the vehicle. And for the European market, <clears throat> everything that goes in the software, infotainment system and so on, is based in a European cloud that is then also running on European data security laws. So they are really thinking of these topics here as well. And of course, it's very, very you know, important to ask them about that. So far, everything we see here from the buttons and so on, Let's see if this is... Ah, okay, here I found something. This is not dampened. So maybe um, when the engineers are watching here, so the German would expect that this cubby hole is dampened. So you see, I could find something at least <laughs> from my German perspective. But the rest of the build quote here also with the shifting pedals and so on, this makes a very, very decent first impression. The middle console is actually quite large. It kind of houses you in here a little bit. And we see here basically three screens. This is 14 inch right there. This is another screen. And we also have a big head up display. Minimalistic here, definitely the digital instruments. So it's with the speed right there. They kept this one here really, really small because they say most of the time you will look at the head up display. A huge 14-inch screen here. Very interesting, the integration at the moment. This is still a prototype stage, but they promise a new Qualcomm chip here for a very high CPU speed. We will check with the final vehicle how that one turns out. This is the main menu. This is not the final software version, but you can get a first glimpse on how this is going to look like. There will also be Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity available. This is, for example, reminding us a little bit of Tesla, for example, where you can set also different driving modes here, for example. And, for example, set up this one here once, and then basically everything is set. You also have different ambient lighting colors here at the moment also, we can see in, in this show mode. There will also be a 360 degree camera being accessed over here. And this one here is for example the volume control. No real volume knob whatsoever. And the climate unit, yeah, you know, I do prefer manual climate dials definitely. They have it here in the second display. And here one more complete cockpit perspective, actually with, you know, handcraft design but once again all animal free so really great materials they choose here also really softened everywhere actually vents right there and there you can see this two screen setup where you have the climate dials right there then you have a dual clutch transmission they developed that actually themselves and also a very sh small shifting lever this one here is for cup holders and then we also have a split armrest right here with some more space underneath, like this. And more storage space, actually, we have to come from a different perspective because that's actually here, <laughs> here just around. And here he is, hello. Here are the chargers, USB chargers on the 
other side, USB-C and USB-A and, you know, some more space just to put things here. And here, this is a separate climate screen. Um, I mean, yeah, you can also use voice control, but this is, again, something where I would prefer manual climate knobs, something they do not have to take from the German manufacturers because they are also going more in the touch direction. So if the Chinese engineers watch here, we in Europe here and also in US prefer manual climate knobs, at least our community here on Autogefühl. Well, this car is 5G ready already and they also offer an app. And um, at the moment it already sets, you know, automatic to German, to my language here. They can check out some information on the car and also some news maybe they write, for example. They have a shop right here and of course there will be more functionality later on and also um, like a personal account you can set up. And now we can also open the panoramic roof for you right here. So this is first of all the shade. I really also like this bright interior ceiling and then we can also open the whole thing. This is the half opening so to speak and this is then open. Yeah, as you can see here it goes all the way over the vehicle and yeah to give us some more air here at the motor show atmosphere where it's getting really hot here meanwhile here we go <laughs> and now to the rear where we have you know astonishing leg room right there so this is really a lot this is set to my driver's position here actually and also very comfortable once again with the interesting materials high grade leatherette and this is really one of the highest grades of leatherette i've seen and also here the microfiber surface here i mean so the seating materials are my favorite thing with this vehicle also when you lean backwards for example so very spacious very comfortable here and we also have the disco mode here once again from the ambient lighting showing us all the available colors manual shades right there and also then at the inside of the rear doors, soft materials all the way here. Once again, the quilting. So when you think about, we heard a price of about 50,000 euros or then later maybe also dollars. And this is of course very competitive. If you think about like for a BMW X5, you have to pay like 30K more or something. Here are the cup holders in the rear like this. So interior build quality wise, it can easily catch up with the German premium manufacturers if not exceed it. Yeah, maybe a little bit less screenish, more something to touch and something, and then it's good. Here also rather flat bottom here, no big middle console because there's no mechanical link for the all-wheel drive needed. This is something else which is also making the interior spacious, especially when I move here to the position in the middle. Of course, it is rather thought out for the outside seats, but here even as a tall adult, you can very well sit in the middle seat as well. And then we have the trunk here with the electric hatch. Here we go. So, what we can see here, let's lift that one up. So, this one is not aligned yet here. So, the, yeah, this is a little bit wobbly, so I would like a, a railing left and right, actually. Um, they have put the battery not that far to the rear, so you can still have some you know, height here in the trunk. This also looks very well processed right there. It's not too high overall still. You can see right there when you know when I'm staying right there, then you have somehow of an imagination. You see, interesting, they didn't go for a too long trunk, but still that, that works very well. The width also around a meter or 40 inches. They rather went for more leg room in the rear. This is also a very interesting approach. We are just right there. You cannot fold the seats from here, but at least you can reach over from here. So very interesting approach. Not such a long trunk, rather more legroom focus. And of course, we will keep you updated when we f can drive this vehicle. And then we'll have to see it can, if it can really catch up to the German premium manufacturers. Because driving agility is something everyone wants to achieve. Will this also work with this one? We'll find out.